Then I told him to get his hands off his junk and keep him on the goddamn wheel. <laughs> Stop! 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 Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. I'll go ahead and look it up. Thank you so very much in advance. <laughs> Today we're jumping back into r slash neckbeard stories. Yes, it comes from r slash neckbeard stories, not from my personal subreddit, r slash red x reads, which is a really good place to post things, but I do like when things get posted in neckbeard stories and also name drop me right at the beginning. So I'm, I'm just saying, you know, pick what's right for you. <laughs> Today we're jumping back into uh, Chris Trucker, I guess is what we're calling him, since Trucker Beard was taken by a doo-doo loving beard <laughs> who made things really political and weird but um this guy is certainly a specimen i'm so glad that it's been an ongoing saga and it seems quite popular in the neckbeard subreddit <laughs> people are just all over it every time it gets posted i got people hopping in the dms like hey new part please new part i'm like okay okay i got it hold on <laughs> we gotta do it right now uh but first let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way and then uh, we will dive right into some of this neckbeard stories Cringe. My co pilot is a neckbeard, number two, <laughs> by Mommy Honker Donkers. <laughs> hey, oh, look at my little college man. <laughs> uh, still the best username on Reddit. Come at me, bro. <laughs> My co-pilot is a neckbeard. I saw that my first post picked up a little traction and is even getting read by Red X and people seem to enjoy it. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about Chris in this post. Oh yes, people did seem to enjoy it, dude. The views slightly middling, creeping up on 7,000 since the last post, which I am super grateful for. Hopefully this saga is gonna pick up even more steam as we get more parts out. So that's usually how things work. Anyways, <laughs> thanks for coming back to tell us some more. I need more. So, who is Chris? That's not his real name, by the way. Chris is a fat, balding man whom I work with. Unfortunately. <laughs> Tentatively work with. I wish I didn't work with him, but yes, I do. We are truckers, and him and I drive as a team. <laughs> he smells awful sweats profusely, and loves to spank it to his favorite Japanese cartoons. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you, OP? I wasn't spanking it, I was just really itchy. In, in the crotchal region <laughs> for an extended period. <laughs> Who do you think you're fooling? <laughs> Probably fooled like his mom or something, but she just pretended that she didn't know what was going on because she didn't want to think about it. <laughs> Steven, what are you doing in there? Uh, drugs. <laughs> you will never see him in anything other than baggy sweatpants that are stained with poopy coom. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and that is what he has been dubbed, the Poopy Coom Man. I couldn't put that in the title, though, because YouTube would come down on me faster than uh, something that comes down real fast. <laughs> what, a peregrine falcon? <laughs> but that makes YouTube sound too cool, uh, so I stick with what I said before. And he also has on uh, a Lazy Time t-shirt that managed to contain his jiggling mass. I mean, I'm all about sweatpants and Lazy Time t-shirts, but... At least make sure they're washed, bro. <laughs> you get a day or two out of them, and then it's over. They gotta go with the washer. That's just basic. After spending enough time with him, I honestly do not believe that he even owns any other clothes. <laughs> Chris has a propensity for smoking dope with the lot lizards at every travel plaza we stop at when he's not complaining about how he needs to bathe which is basically just uh, OP's euphemism for the things that he does in the showers. 
<laughs> and he acts like scoring with truck stop prostitutes is his crowning achievement in life. Which, honestly, it is. I mean, step back. Look at the dude's life. <laughs> what do we really got to write home about here? <laughs> I've tried to get into another truck, but HR doesn't really seem to care. So that failed. And I've been stuck with Chris for quite some time now. Oh, that is so unfortunate. But at least you can turn it into a lovely story. <laughs> <laughs> Your suffering has entertained thousands. Think about that. That's beautiful. <laughs> I'm not going to say that I hope OP's suffering never ends, but I kind of hope it never ends. As long as it doesn't get too weird. <laughs> Just uncomfortable is fine. Uncomfortable and gross. A nice derpy neckbeard story. Somebody asked a question about how we get paid during our last episode when I was talking about how we had to overnight somewhere and get our load. Giggity. <laughs> we get paid by the mile. Pretty standard procedure for the bulk of the industry. God, that sucks, dude. So if you're not driving, you're not making any money, you just gotta hang out there in the freaking truck stop not making anything. I hate it. Already. I freaking hate it. <laughs> In this particular adventure, Chris and I were once again leaving from Los Angeles, and we were eastbound to Albuquerque. If there's one thing I know about California, it's that driving a big rig through Los Angeles is a complete and total nightmare. Bro, driving a golf cart or a bicycle through Los Angeles is a nightmare. Uh, I had a nice teeny tiny car. It didn't make the commute any better. Stop and go traffic, woof. It's bad in the Philippines too, but compared to LA traffic, nothing compares to LA traffic. <laughs> Even the smallest mistakes in your navigation can result in disastrous consequences. Now, there's no designated order in which we have to drive the truck. It doesn't really matter who takes first shift, as long as the person's taken their appropriate rest period for driving off with the truck. Yeah, you, you get a state-mandated 15 minutes break and just put it on autopilot. That's fine. <laughs> I don't know how any of this truck and stuff works. I'm learning so much today. Now, this was especially true after receiving our first shipment for that day of our new voyage, but Chris, for some reason, wasn't comfortable with me driving his house through downtown Los Angeles on our way out. Chris declared that he would instead take us out of Los Angeles and get us started down the road. Is that really a good idea, though? <laughs> <laughs> he seems really comfortable with the idea, and that makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> Maybe because it's stop and go traffic, it's like easier to drive in or something. But that doesn't make any sense. The open road is the easiest thing to drive. <laughs> Whatever. My booty puckered, but he wasn't going to take it. He simply had to drive us out of Los Angeles because he believed that I would do something stupid and wreck the truck. Oh God, Chris is gonna wreck the truck, isn't he? <laughs> uh, this is just like a little bit of foreshadowing going on here. He legitimately thinks that he's like the more skilled driver. Oh, this is the Dunning-Kruger effect it, on full display. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm the best at what I do. Are you, though? You can't even wash your poopy coom pants. <laughs> You're not the best at anything. Have you ever driven through Los Angeles before? Oh, God, years ago. But yeah, I did one time. <laughs> it was awful. It's an absolute nightmare. Any time of the day... Any day of the week, especially when you're hauling a freaking tractor trailer. Luckily, I didn't have to go that far. But like I said, even if you're driving a golf cart, it's horrible. <laughs> I wouldn't wish rush hour traffic on anyone. Well, we're pulling out in the middle of rush hour. Don't do that. <laughs> With our load, trying to navigate the highways. I was sitting in the passenger seat, as per usual, just kind of screwing around on my laptop, waiting for the day to start, while Chris, 
tried to simultaneously listen to the GPS and his anime podcast at the same time. <laughs> Turn right here. Sussy baka. <laughs> Uh, you can imagine that this didn't go well, as I guessed that Chris was prone to start daydreaming about his sweet, pure, virginal waifus and stopped paying attention to our GPS navigation and the road. Your job is not waifus, dum-dum. <laughs> uh, your job is based on the GPS, and if you ain't making miles, you ain't making money. So stop getting lost, stop... Stop doing everything. Everything that you do, just quit it. <laughs> try to be better, for God's sake. Just try. That's really all I ask. I guess he has made some progress. At least he doesn't jerk it in the bunk anymore. He goes into the truck stop showers like a proper gentleman. <laughs> oh, we were coming up on an interchange. And I can only imagine that Chris was trying to determine how he could shift his stick into gear while he drove instead of paying attention to the audible warnings that came from the dashboard when the GPS stated that we needed to take the upcoming exit from the 710 to the I-10 to get onto the main highway out of Inglewood, California and towards New Mexico. Oh, that's fine, OP. There's gonna be another exit, right? <laughs> You just get off on the next exit and, and find the freeway again with a tractor trailer. <laughs> uh, holy God. I can only imagine that the pressing nature of hearing about the virginal purity of his chosen animated mate took more precedence than the very real consequences of not paying attention to the road. So when that turnoff did present itself, Chris noticed it only at the last minute and shouted, Oh, God damn it! <laughs> what are you, stupid? Just look at the GPS. You don't even really have to listen to it. You can just glance down at it and be like, Oh, turn right 800 meters. I got that. But instead, he has images of pure virginal waifus dancing in front of his eyes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the access to the ramp, however, was cut off by a long line of cars piled bumper to bumper. Welcome to LA traffic. <laughs> Come on, he's the expert. He's going to get us through this cleanly. He, he knows what he's doing, in theory. And he had to pause with his hazard lights on in the middle of the freeway, waiting for an opportunity to get over. <laughs> Uh, you want to cause a crash because that's how you cause a crash. I really don't understand why OP wasn't the one that was chosen to drive. <laughs> this is stupid. The whole time, Chris yelled at the top of his lungs how these goddamn redacted racial epithets need to learn how to drive. <laughs> God, and he's racist too. Of course he is. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be? Ugh, I told him to shut his mouth. I didn't state my reasons, but they are quite simply as follows. One, that's completely inappropriate, and nobody should cast umbrage on an entire race of people. And two, we were in goddamn Inglewood, and the windows were down. <laughs> uh, uh, you're gonna get murdered, both of you. <laughs> I didn't know if Chris had a death wish or was simply clueless, or maybe it was both. But I prayed that nobody in those bumper-to-bumper -bumper conditions was one of the specified race, two, able to hear him, and three, gangster enough to discharge firearms at our truck. <laughs> I mean, it seems like a joke, but that shit happens, man. The world is crazy. You don't know who's going to do what. So I think OP was uh, quite on point with his logic. I mean, even if we weren't in the middle of Inglewood, I probably would tell him to shut his freaking mouth. <laughs> do you think he'd listen? I don't know. He listened about the, the shower jerking, so maybe, perhaps. Although it's far more likely that he would just quiet those thoughts around you and continue thinking that way, but... 
As long as I don't gotta hear it, I suppose it's fine. Whatever. I can't arrest you for thought crime. Yet! <laughs> Eventually, someone decides to let him in. It felt like we sat there blocking that travel line for like a whole five minutes. It was probably less, honestly. And when we finally got on the road again, Chris turned to me and vented about how nobody knew how to drive at great length. <laughs> uh, were you not there just a couple of minutes ago? Are you, <laughs> did you just completely blank out what happened? Call him out on it, OP. <laughs> uh, you can't let that one slide. Roast him. Destroy these delusions of grandeur. As a favor to both of you. <laughs> uh, he cited that roads would be better if women were denied the right to get a license. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess I, I should have guessed that the sexism was right behind the racism. Honestly, how did you resist not like reaching over and slapping him in the mouth? <laughs> uh, just tell him to quit talking that shit. He doesn't understand words. He understands violence. But instead, OP just shook his head and pressed his hands to his face and told him to shut up <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, uh, how's that working out for you? <laughs> He remarked that that was the kind of reaction he'd expect from somebody who drove like a woman. <laughs> uh, safely? <laughs> Under the speed limit? <laughs> God damn, dude. Literally trash talking 50% of the planet uh, about how they don't know how to drive when he obviously doesn't know how to drive either. <laughs> This is mind-blowing. I threatened to smash his phone so that he wouldn't be distracted by his pure virginal cartoon girls while he attempted to haul multiple tons of collision-inducing death down the packed roads. <laughs> I'm getting a little more scared to drive now. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Uh, yes, I got places to go, but there might be a methed out trucker listening to an anime podcast out there somewhere. <laughs> With my luck, I'm gonna run right into him. <laughs> he got quiet real quick when the anime girls got dragged into this conflict. <laughs> Anything. We must protect the waifus. <laughs> I don't think he could survive this job if he didn't get to listen to people talking about how wonderful his cartoon lady friends were. <laughs> cartoon lady friends. I love how OP talks like they're like a 50-year-old man or something like that. <laughs> they might be. I don't think we got in an age range on OP, but I'm thinking older for sure. For those that are curious, I haven't asked him the name of the channel that he watches, simply because I don't want to encourage his behavior or make him think that we share common ground. That is probably well advised. I'm sure they dropped the name at some points, but that would actually require listening to that, and I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't have the brain cells to spare on something like that. I guess we'll all die curious about where he gets his riveting analysis of cartoon women from. <laughs> there were su suggestions in the comments on the last video. If you're looking for an anime waifu debate podcast thing, I don't know why you would be, but <laughs> to each their own, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, so we're driving down the road. And I guess as the debate raged on, and I ignored his shenanigans, he got hot and bothered. And not from the desert heat. Oh my god, dude, no. No! He's supposed to save it for the showers! I thought we were making progress! <laughs> uh, from the corner of my eye, I could see him shifting the stick in his sweatpants while he drove. Oh god, dude. And he looked longingly 
at every truck stop that we passed. <laughs> Uh, you've got some like Pavlovian response or something. Truck stops are what makes him horny now. <laughs> uh, oh God, I hate it. Scream at him, spray him with a water bottle. <laughs> Make it stop. Uh, his self-control was lapsing, it seemed. <laughs> and I told him to get his hands off his junk. And keep him on the goddamn wheel. <laughs> Stop! 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 <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, spray bottle would come in handy. Just like a naughty cat. Psst, no! <laughs> he got spiteful and remarked about how it was just itchy. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get some unguent, a bit of ointment there, <laughs> if it's still itchy. And I told him that maybe if he stopped sleeping with lot lizards, then perhaps he wouldn't have that problem. Oh, so now we're just pretending that it is actually itchy? See, just like Chris's mother, when she caught him, he's like, it's itchy, mom. She's like, okay, please, let's never speak of this again. <laughs> <laughs> and OP took a page out of that book, I guess. This is when Chris shrieked, They're not lot lizards, okay? They're escorts! <laughs> uh, yeah, discount escorts. 20 bucks? <laughs> that sounds like a deal to me! <laughs> to which I retorted that they were escorting his wiener, alright? <laughs> <sighs> uh, they're massage therapists. Yeah, massage your cock for money. <laughs> Chris ranted at me, insisting that they were his girlfriends for the night. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, whatever makes you feel better, all right? Whatever helps you sleep at night, I guess. Except he doesn't sleep at night because he does a bunch of crank with the lot lizards. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, dude. This is just so heavy. So weird. I don't even know where to place it on the radar. But I am enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why he even kept up this pretense, to be honest. We knew. We both knew that they're hookers. And we both knew that he was just buying their company and favor for the night. Even though I haven't done so myself, and never will, I have a family of my own that I love very much. I do get it. People need to eat, and people need to get laid. Yeah, he's stimulating the economy by stimulating his wiener. <laughs> Personally, even when I was my most down bad, I never resorted to that. But I'm not gonna judge anybody who does, I guess. It's this, plus an amalgamation of a hundred other things that really makes Chris the neckbeard that we love to hate. <laughs> I'm glad you got a family too, OP. I'm sticking with the theory that he's an older dude. I can understand the fundamental basis of this exchange, and something tells me that Chris never had any attention in his life before he actually hit the road in that truck and discovered the magical world of truck stop toots. <laughs> oh, magical indeed, I'm sure. <laughs> I asked him how he felt about his actions. Oh no, don't ever ask a neckbeard to self-reflect. This is dangerous territory you're getting into. <laughs> I asked him why he didn't try to actually you know, shape up and find a woman that wasn't selling her attentions just for the evening. And that is when he hit me with a real jaw dropper. I have a fiance. I even have a kid. I just don't get to see my wife, so somebody has to take care of my needs. Really? Somebody married him? <laughs> This animal reproduced with somebody? <laughs> oh, uh, that's unfortunate. The audacity of that man. My jaw dropped. 
I can't fathom the basis of infidelity, and frankly, I don't want to. Call me old-fashioned, but if you're gonna marry someone, you make an oath to be in it to win it for life. With them, and only with them. And violating that is just reprehensible. Goddamn, OP, I like you more and more <laughs> as we go on. I think you and I could get a beer together indeed. I recomposed myself when I looked at his hand and noticed that he didn't wear a wedding band, however, and asked him what was up with that. He doesn't want to scare off the, the toots. Uh, actually, they probably don't give a damn. <laughs> I bet it's so he could get through it in his own mind, right? Wifey's out of sight, out of mind, something like that? Maybe? Uh, Chris remarked that his fiance never actually got him a wedding band and was in fact very, very far away at the moment. I mean, okay, that's typical for the life of a truck driver, but the way he said it told me something was off. I asked if he had a picture of his family. I was curious. He motioned to his wallet up on the console and I grabbed it and flipped it open. <laughs> Oh, God, it's gonna be a ham beast. Absolute leg beard. <laughs> Tucked away in one of those clear plastic slip spots for photos was a picture of, I kid you not, an anime girl. <laughs> uh, oh, no. The wife he was talking about was a waifu the whole time. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, bro. Uh, I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. I looked behind it, and there was another photo. <laughs> I rifled through the contents of the wallet and found nothing else. And when I asked him where the photo of his family was, he remarked that it was right up front and center. Yeah. <laughs> He kept a photo of his waifu in his wallet. <laughs> uh, this is like reaching new levels of sad cringe, isn't it? Holy hell! <laughs> uh, this is not mental gymnastics. We are at the mental Olympics. <laughs> he went on to explain. That's Mikasa, and behind her, you can see the child we're gonna have when we finally have a home together. Bruh. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> My brain is broken. <laughs> I can't even form words. Really? That's all I have to say. Really? <laughs> this is when I realized that Chris wasn't all there for the very first time. And on a profound level. <laughs> no shit, man. R uh, really? <laughs> and I wondered which came first. The speed? The anime? Or the delusions. <laughs> this chicken and the egg, nobody knows. Not, not even Chris remembers at this point. The conversation made me quite uncomfortable then. <laughs> As it would. <laughs> and I decided to just zone out as he ranted on and on about the idyllic little life that he would carve out with his fiance. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, oh, I kind of want to get off the ride now. <laughs> this is so weird. Uh, like, okay, a lot of people have waifus, either ironically or not, but they don't make plans about the house that they're going to buy and the, the kid they're going to have and stuff. They realize that she's fictional, right? Oh, God. Maybe he's just messing with you, OP. That's what I have to believe in order to get myself through this. <laughs> <laughs> He's just messing with you. It's all a prank. God, I hope it's all a prank. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened to this man to become the way that he was, but something somewhere must have gone horribly wrong. And for just a moment, 
My heart went out to him. How do you reform somebody from something like that? I don't think it's your job to reform him, OP. Offer him all the sympathy you like, but unless he's dead set on changing, yeah, none of this is gonna change. And if that's the case, then I don't have any sympathy for you. How many times can somebody punch themselves in the face and you just keep going, oh, you poor thing, and he does it again. And you're like, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> Repeat, ad infinitum. I don't have the patience for that, honestly. <laughs> And OP says, I really don't think that you can reform somebody like that without a lot of tough love. While it isn't my responsibility, I do my best while I'm in that truck to make Chris act like a regular human being. Ah, uh, you're one of the good ones, OP. Just a ray of optimism shining through. But it might be all that this beard needs. So good on you for taking up the mantle, I guess. Even if it was thrust upon you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the ride continued in silence, with the occasional eruptions of Daddy and Baka whenever something unbelievable was said over the truck speakers. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna invest in a pair of noise canceling headphones. <laughs> it wasn't until somewhere around Flagstaff that his shift was coming to a close and I had to take over the driving once more. We pulled over at a truck stop, wherein Chris insisted that he just had to go take a shower. <laughs> and while I agreed with the concept, we simply didn't have time for him to go and spank it. <laughs> Does he take a while? I would think a dude like this would be over in minutes, but... <laughs> what do I know, I guess? I ignored his protests about uh, how filthy he was. He was filthy. <laughs> As I punched the big rig into gear and took off on the road once more. That's right, gotta make some money, gotta make some miles. Worst comes to worst, I guess you go back in the bunk and uh, scratch yourself there. <laughs> With every passing truck stop, I heard him whine from the back of the cab like a dog that needed to pee. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, dude, it's Pavlov all over again. He sees a truck stop, he starts getting hard. He's like, <laughs> okay, it's go time. <laughs> uh, God, that's disturbing. His pent up wife who lust needed release. <laughs> But we had a deadline to make. After several hours, I heard him grumble that he couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> God. <laughs> and the bed springs began to rock once more, this time punctuated with the fervent spraying of aerosol. <laughs> uh, I, I guess Opie's yelled at him enough that he's shaped into something at least more acceptable. Still, really, this is not an acceptable thing to do, but he's spraying the aerosol so you don't get a face full of poopy coom smell. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give him any credit for that? No, me either. <laughs> I yelled at him to stop spanking it! <laughs> but he declared that he was cleaning up while also demanding that I didn't look. <laughs> Uh, it's like a toddler, dude. A giant toddler that poops on himself and just wants to jerk off all the time. <laughs> I'm not doing anything, but don't look. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, he was getting crafty. <laughs> it wasn't going to let me spoil his uh, cleansing moment. I wasn't going to have it, however. The return of musky body spray was at hand, and not the deodorized kind. Well, maybe it was both. I had no solution, however, and the cab flooded with the stank once more. Ugh. Oh god, I don't want to breathe it in. <laughs> As he returned to the passenger seat, I glared at him with disgust, and told him that if he ever spanked it with me in the cab again, he would be walking. I would pull that truck over, mister. I will hit you with my ring hand. 
<laughs> he declared once more that I was being unreasonable and that he was just cleaning himself up because he was so dirty. Yeah, cleaning the pipes is more like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're still filthy. You still smell like rotten garbage. What did you actually clean aside from your dick neck? <laughs> uh, he also said, I should stop being such a whiny baby about this man musk. Uh, yeah, whatever you gotta tell yourself, man. <laughs> it was just endless with this dude. As soon as we hit the highway into Grants, New Mexico, he remarked that the desert heat was getting him sweaty once more, and then he had eh, to go clean up again. You do, do not do it. <laughs> I'm gonna take my belt off and come back there after you, rather than let him conclude his business as he heaved and groaned and sprayed his spray. <laughs> <laughs> Not like his actual spray, but, but the aerosol spray, right? <laughs> All this in a pretense to hide his itchy nuts, I decided to apply a taste of his own medicine to try and foil his efforts to, uh, bathe. I had heard enough Japanese banging in the middle of the night at that point in time to where I was becoming quite fluent in that forbidden language of love. <laughs> Uh, and as he sidled to the back, I started mimicking the unholy sounds that I heard coming from his phone speaker in the dead hours of the night. <laughs> I think Iku, that's a good one to throw in there. <laughs> Why am I trying to help OP with this? I think it's just hilarious to imagine a middle-aged family man yelling out, Chris Kuhn, oh, senpai. <laughs> just trying to get this other grown man to stop jerking off in the cabin of a big rig. <laughs> oh, Chris yelled at me to shut my mouth and stop distracting him while he cleaned up. <laughs> Uh, it takes intense concentration. <laughs> I retorted that if he was just bathing, then there was no reason why my outburst would foil his efforts to clean himself. This tactic became my go-to for a while, until Chris learned to ignore it after some time, and perhaps even awkwardly enjoy it. Uh, at which point, well, I gave it up. Hell yeah. Drop that like a, a sack of hot potatoes. <laughs> uh, it did, however, foil his cabin showers for a good while. Oh, we need a new tactic. <laughs> After many anime gasm sounds for the next few hundred miles, whenever it proved prudent, we finally made it to Albuquerque on time, just barely, and once more sat in layover hell while we waited for another shipment to be assigned to us. Chris once more prowled the truck stops, and I once more vegetated in the cab. God damn, this dude is just like, too insatiable. Is he prowling for toots? Or is he prowling for, uh, just friends? Somebody who will talk to him about anime waifus. Which, good luck finding that at a truck stop, I bet. <laughs> Whatever. But Albuquerque is a fantastic hellhole. And I've seen quite a few. We had to overnight here before we could pick up our load in the morning and head back west. Chris had disappeared into the ether, and of course I paid that no mind. Yes, blessed silence. <laughs> With the sun going down, I went to clean myself up. That's when I found Chris around the side of the travel plaza, hanging out with some random criddlers, bugging eyes, grinding teeth, and exaggerated movements galore. They were shooting dice against the wall of the building, and they were gambling on what could only be surmised as loose pocket change. Big stakes game, fellas. <laughs> I had bigger bills, but I shot it all into my eyes. That's a way that you could do meth, right? If you're, if you're really hardcore. <laughs> Chris was apparently on fire 
as he took those meth muppets for a staggering pot that summed up to about the value of uh, about 350. <laughs> and then I realized it was a goddamn Loch Ness monster. <laughs> uh, he tried to flag me down and asked me if I wanted to gamble with uh, him and his new friends. I took one look and realized that for a couple of dudes strung out behind a truck stop, they look pretty damn gangster. And I told him that I don't gamble and that he should probably stop while he was ahead. Tweakers do not take too kindly to guys who take away their drug money, you know? <laughs> then I went inside and washed up. Yeah, OP's been around the block a time or two, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, that is some sage advice right there. Take your tree fitty and go home. <laughs> Goddamn Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> when I came back out, Chris had disappeared into the night, and his Criddler friends were nowhere to be found. Whatever. I went back to the truck, climbed up, and instead of being greeted with a symphony of squeaking bunk beds and Japanese cartoon lovemaking, I was surprised that the cab was empty. As much as I despised Chris, I must say that at least when we overnighted somewhere, he made his presence sparse while he went to hang out with all the random weirdos. <laughs> yeah, he's a big boy. I mean that quite literally. He, he's gonna be fine, I'm pretty sure. And if he's not, then I get a new co-pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, whenever he disappears, I am relieved. We'd been driving together for a bit now, and his absence no longer surprised me. I just crawled back into my bed and passed out. I don't know how long I was out when I felt the truck shivering and the hoisting girth of a rampaging neckbeard. Here he goes. He's on meth again. <laughs> the ride never ends. <laughs> I stirred from my slumber and saw Chris stumble into the truck, red-faced and terrified. He slammed the lock shut on the truck doors and beelined straight for the driver's seat and started the engine. I crawled out of my bed wondering what the hell was going on. <laughs> uh, he didn't heed OP's advice about his new friends is what's going on. <laughs> Uh, dude, we need to go right now. <laughs> By the dim light of the streetlights, I could see that his eye was swollen and his lip was leaking blood. Outside, I could hear someone shouting, Get out here so I can beat your fat ass into the pavement. And I could only surmise that Chris had done a little too good at his gambling. <laughs> uh, I hate to say I told you so. Actually, no, I don't. Told you so. <laughs> As Chris put the truck in gear and pulled out of the lot, I demanded to know what the hell was going on. Hey, those guys I was gambling with, well, I won. And then we went to hang out and I thought I'd be nice and buy us some dope. And then they didn't give me any. So I said, what the hell? And that they owed me for winning. So I tried to take the bag. And they beat me up and threw me on the ground and took my wallet. So I don't have any money. And they have all my cards and... And... <laughs> <laughs> Why did you not expect this to happen? You're hanging out with dope fiends. Fiends for dope. <laughs> you think they're going to share and play nicey-nice? No. It's going to be like a piranha feeding frenzy as soon as you get the bag. <laughs> as he drove, I told him to calm down. He was peeling out of that lot like a madman and almost sideswiped a car waiting at the light. <laughs> when we finally got to an area where we could rest and not worry about mutated criddlers skinwalking up to the truck demanding Chris's blood... <laughs> He turned to me from the driver's seat. I was back in my bunk, and he sidled up to me. Hey, you need to loan me some money. <laughs> I don't need to do shit, bro. <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? I rolled my eyes and told him to leave me alone, and that I wasn't going to give him anything. 
He started to rant and rave about how I owed it to him as his co-pilot to help him out when he was in a bind. And I informed him that I, in fact, owe him nothing. He was a grown-ass man. Call the bank in the morning, tell him he got robbed, and to freeze your transactions and issue a new card. You know? That wasn't good enough for Chris, however, because right now he was a shaking, adrenaline-fueled mess. And all that adrenaline, well, it had made him hungry. Maybe it is actually adrenaline and not meth if he's getting hungry. <laughs> I was assuming that he was struck out, but yeah, perhaps he's not at all since he didn't get to share the bag. Fight or flight, it could take a lot out of you, you know? I told him to get his ass out of the cab and go beg if he needed food so badly. <laughs> Live off some of your reserves there, Chris. I think you're going to be fine for at least a couple weeks. <laughs> he bitched and moaned about how ungrateful I was and that I owed him for disturbing his showers and how I was a little beta bitch and please just give me money because I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, trying every single tactic in the book. That's beautiful. No, 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 no. Go freaking beg. He left the cab screaming and shouting and squealing like a stuck pig. And I imagine he probably woke up the guys in the big rigs next to us because as he exited the cab, I could hear him shouting profanities at the trucks beside us. <laughs> yeah, he just makes friends everywhere he goes, doesn't he? <laughs> I rolled over, shut my eyes and just went to bed. Sleep on top of your wallet. <laughs> Don't trust Chris with a goddamn thing. Uh, I didn't wake up until the sun was starting to rise the following morning, and Chris was nowhere to be found. I wondered if he actually ever found the food that he was looking for. When I went outside to go look for him, because we needed to get on the road, I found him outside the travel plaza, looking sad and sullen as he begged people for change, and every single one of them was shutting him down. I sat to the side where he couldn't see me while I listened to the conversations that he had. <laughs> Excuse me, can you spare some change so I can get some food? Get a job. I have a job. My wallet just got stolen and I'm hungry. You don't need no food. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that they said it. I was thinking it, but I wasn't going to say it, <laughs> Chris. Please, I haven't eaten since yesterday. Passerby, good. Keep at it. <laughs> uh, that was cold-blooded. <laughs> uh, holy shit, dude. That is so hardcore. <laughs> uh, oh, that passerby. He's a real one. <laughs> I snickered <laughs> and then approached him and asked him how his night went. He was cold and tired and sullen and hadn't slept. And I sarcastically suggested, well, maybe you should just find those gangster dudes and buy some speed off them. Then you wouldn't need food or sleep. Hey, big brain play right there. <laughs> Don't ever do this. <laughs> He picked up that I was being a sour bastard, and he yelled at me and said that he would, but he didn't want to get beat up. Oh, who's the little beta now? <laughs> I changed the subject quickly and told him that we needed to get on the road. We'd be running late if we didn't leave soon. He said that he wasn't going anywhere till he got some food. So I threatened to leave him, homeless, broke, hungry, and cold in the middle of Albuquerque. He finally broke and waddled beside me back to the truck. <laughs> this is a sad situation, but I don't know. Dude got himself into it. How bad can I feel again? I don't have a whole lot of sympathy to spare. We climbed inside, and I, knowing that Chris was up all night and was not fit to drive, I ordered him to go into the back of the cab and go to bed. With a sharp and vehement, and no scratching, you filthy scumbag. <laughs> and I plugged the coordinates into the GPS and did my paperwork. As he got comfortable, 
I heard him shifting uncomfortably in his bed as he tried to keep his hands from his itchy nether regions. <laughs> uh, he is just an animal, bro. He can't help himself. <laughs> as I once more pulled out of the truck stop, his breathing started to become labored. I began to voice my best Japanese schoolgirl getting lucky with an octopus. <laughs> Uh, he yelled at me to shut up and how I was keeping him from sleeping. <laughs> and I told him that if he tried to rub one out, I was going to keep going for my entire shift and that he needed to just drop his weenie and actually go to bed. <laughs> but it helps me sleep, OP. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Chris Kuhn did eventually get the message and lapsed into slumber, and I was able to continue on in blessed silence to get our new load and start down the road once more. He didn't wake up till much later in the day, when we were already heading back west at blistering speeds. As he staggered up to the passenger seat, he asked me eh, how far it was to the next truck stop. <laughs> Uh, this dude has like three joys in life, <laughs> but he really enjoys those things. <laughs> uh, anyway, I guess that's enough for now. I'm on the road at this very moment, but after this load, I got a bit of home time before I have to get back out there. Honestly, excited to get away from this weirdo for a little bit. It'll be a nice break and it'll let me compile some more of my thoughts. I am excited for that. I'm also uh, quite terrified of that. <laughs> but Chris doing a little too well at gambling and getting rolled by a couple of druggies. That's just classic. This is what happens when you're a social butterfly at the truck stop. <laughs> I don't even want to meet normal people. I definitely don't want to go around meeting truck stop people. Jesus, dude. <laughs> what are you even thinking? OP got the right idea. Veg out on your computer, mind your freaking business, let people go about their merry way, and yeah, eventually you just sleep it off and go get your next load and whatever. Life carries on, just like that. How does somebody need to jerk it three times a day? Every time they pass a truck stop, he's looking out the window, whining like a dog. Hmm, I want to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, bro, give it a rest. That is a deep level of addiction. Holy God. What a great episode. We're starting to uh, find Chris a little bit more deplorable, which is really great. <laughs> it's another beard that we love to hate. Watch his goofy antics. He's a little bit more hateful than some of the other goofy beards that we've had, like Bowler Beard or Sir Sam, but... He will still serve in the interim until we get another, like, 100% goofball. This guy's got, like, some racism, misogyny flowing through him, which is a really ugly part, but I hope that it doesn't shine through too hard. I don't want the story to get too ugly. Just, you know, have him get rolled by another couple of druggies. <laughs> I wonder how many times that has actually happened. Because you know it ain't just the once. Chris ain't out here learning lessons. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, I hope you like, comment, subscribe, do all them things. Maybe share the video around too. That would be super cool. I'd appreciate it in extra double plus lots. We also got all kinds of links in the description. Plugs, playlists, podcasts. Hey, we've also got social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, and my Patreon with my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them all Jerry, Jerry much as I do every episode. So thank you. Classy Trash Panda, Robin Allen Wings, Camille Sarah, Jarhead Jerry, Oorah, Logan Wolf, Roxanne Wolf, Sim Jerry, Conrad Engie, Mo Iyer Jerry. Hey, Mr. Red X, sir, it wasn't ketchup, it was honey mussy, mixed with blood. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. Captain Clown Jerry, Hong Kong, Destiny Piper, Aaron Jerry, Twisted Child, Broken Logic, Sam and Susie, Esteban, for all blank side. I wear he feels unwanted, but keeps on fighting anyways. You gotta never give up. Silent Revolver, the original Jerry, a Jerry, 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 son of Jerry's Jerry Phil Jim Junkies, almost. <laughs> Jerry's Kids Today, Satori, 211 Jerry, the Fellowship of Jerry, a Jerry of Jubilantly Juggling Jerry, Suggesty Jargonian Jerry, Nailed It, Alunia Demon, Assassin Punk Jerry, Aurora Wildheart, the Moon Baron, AXN Grizzly, Baby Jerry, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Blipple Jerry, Catholic Jerry, Commander J Tank, Confederate Jew, going to the Ukraine. Good luck. Danny Toretto said nothing's more important than family. <laughs> Danny stole Bobble Jerry's van. <laughs>
<laughs> Dennis Dayton, Dinosaur Dynamite, Disposable Waifu, Dr. Lux, Emergent Jewel, Esports 50, Frozen Over Studios, Fire Drake, Gypsy, Hey Dream VR, I can't help falling in love with Jerry. I'm Slim Jerry, I'm the real Jerry, all you other Slim Jerry's are just imitating Irish pirates. Tell them I'm running into ya, irradiated jam. Itchy nuts, just scratching, bro. A pimp named Jay Chris, JM Coon, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Nice, Jerry Evil, Jerry the Outlaw, Mother Truck, Hong Kong, Jerry's Buick Riviera, John Hero, John Jerry, Jingle Heimer Schmidt, KJW, Kachow, Crewy, Landlord Jerry. But he's ironic, twist the fate, I broke my own knees, but it's still time to pay rent. Yeah, roll up the stairs and come get me. <laughs> Legend Maker, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry, like and subscribe. <laughs> Milady Dicks, Melgar the Destroyer, Metal Factor, the value of technical is a marvel. Keeps plummeting, but I keep buying the dip. Yeah, metal fact the diamond hands over here. <laughs> Needless King 89. Nightmare Jerry. Oh, gave me Steve Jerry with a bag of marbles after catching him cheating. With Tom. Scandal. Paragon Soul, Phantom of Pines, Jerry Kinson, Jerry Beth, Rantai Lacrimates, Rose, Jerry Miller, DSM Kirby, Sarita the Lolita, Sassy Octopus, Saw, Scarlet's Coven, Sergeant Gay Cop, Bring out the law. Silo M, Staples, aka Jerry Geek, Stephanie Gunner, Sign Up, Boom Stick, Pro Tomago, Tabby, Oba Blue, Tango Fair, Tenton Monster, The Italian Greyhound, Dino, the Lilith Who, The Duncan Trace, Queen Jerry, The Wonder Fusky, Tinder Jerry, here. Uh, so, hey, I showed you my mall katana. Please respond. I think you're beautiful. <laughs> Uh, mall ninja shit. Trying to find another mall to get back to the real world. Uh, you probably don't want to blow into that balloon nut. <laughs> Unbusy B, V3 Prime, Vanguard Angel, Viking Jerry, Wick Attack, Will Mag, Zephyr the Gargoyle, or just Clay, that's fine too. <laughs> Comrade Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, Redwin, not a Viper, Side Jerry, the Cyborg, Saints Blessing, Third Stuff, One Leg Jerry is stumped. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. A normal Jerry. Jerry Berries. The tea collection. Leaf no flavor behind. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Under Jerry's Devour Baltic's Tasty. It is Tom. Admiral T Tank. Emmer Alder. Another stupid hipster. Atomic Jerry Zilla. Bantacoon. Bartender Kelly. Broken Spine Horseradish. The original different Jerry. That's a cake Jerry. California Dairy Girl. Chevron Seven Lock. Corporal Emerald. Ted Furrier. Tiger Princess. Oh, Jerry. Oh, I screwed that up. <laughs> Cryptides. De Crazy. AKA SDI Jerry. Dayton does. Buddy needs all help. Come on, Jerry, buddy. <laughs> Clap your hands if you believe. <laughs> Uh, God, I love that one. Defon Jerry, creator of colorful quick clacks. Dopamine Dane Jerryus. Electrical Fennec, Ghost of Alpha, Heek Knot. Holy Berry Jerry. Hydro Jerry, Solden Janitor Jerry. He's here to clean out your Teddy Coin accounts. Oh no, please, not the Teddy Coins. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Gerald of Rivia. Jerry and Tom versus Happy New Year's Weird Apocalypse. Jerry the Sussy Baka. Jerry's mom has got it going on. Check out the mustache on Jerry Old Rivera. <laughs> Jerry Roxas. Jerry Role Playing Game. Judge, Jerry, and Executioner. Keaton Tails, Kid Mobilis, King Tom, Kids Again, Life of Guardian. Little Bridges Jerry. I never should ate the doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that is some sad cringe. <laughs> Little Edwards, Lucia Lovecraft, M -M Machia, CD, maybe next time you'll forget Miss Duchess, not Invisible Angel, Raptor, she's by Jerry Pie, Snary, that's Snom Jerry, Spoony the Rogue, Spooky Scary Jerry Ton, Techno Dubs, the original Jerry, the X Card, To Infinite Jerry, and Beyond, Tuna Fish Jerry, Unfortunate Headband Jerry, Stronger Head Vegeta, Tom Promise Jerry Swayze, Old Bad Jerry, Tommy Good Boy, the Switch, Facts, Voice, I go look it up. If I, I mean another Red X video, if you want. Also, thank you to my $1 patrons, beautiful people that they are. The end of the month has arrived. Thank you to all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike. If anybody else would like to sign up on the Patreon, I would be massively grateful for that. But if you can't afford to do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like uh, watching some more Red X videos. It's a good idea. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye bye